So in this session, um, we are going to look at how an integrated um, API supply chain help uh, FinServe ecosystem. So uh, when I say FinServe, uh, it includes both fintechs and uh, financial services organizations. Um, so basically um, what we are looking at here is like um, how um, you know, uh, API supply chain helps FinServe ecosystems to uh, thrive and build personalized, um, you know, authenticated consumer experiences. Um, this makes the um, next generation of banking, and that's where the uh, banking industry is moving. Uh, um, so, first, I want to kind of uh, look at uh, what it really means by digital transformation uh, in banking space. Uh, then, I want to discuss how a bank. Uh, can adapt and transform itself to the way people are doing banking um, in these days. And then I want to go into um, details how a bank can provide value exposing the internal and partner capabilities as APIs, and as well as how they would provide value and um, you know, uh, create new revenue channels. Um, and as well as um, banks are sitting on a treasure trove with, with their data and how we can use the data um, as, as a, a revenue channel and then expose them as APIs. And then I want to introduce this new concept called uh, Banking Experience Canvas, uh, a way of interacting with your customers. You know, when I say customers, like retail customers and um, you know, uh, business customers, how you can kind of, uh, you know, uh, aggregate your capabilities and deliver uh, with, a, with a, a more authenticated experience to your customers. Um, yeah, so I want to bring this um, interesting quote by Amit uh, from Google Cloud. Um, you know, think of uh, digital transformation as a, a state of uh, perpetual agility and always ready to evolve. So that is very important for whatever the customers want next and you'll be um, you know, pointed down in the right path. So it's all about your ability to evolve and, and, and look at uh, the, the, the varying needs of your customers and adjust yourself. Um, and if you look at the term digital transformation, digital transformation is overused and often abused term. Uh, it is not about spending half a million dollars on a on a um, you know brand new digital transformation platform. It's not. Uh, it's about whether the company uh, philosophy recognizes the fact that the organization has to transform itself to an ag agile organization or agile ecosystem, and how soon you can understand uh, you know customer needs and and come up with innovative products and innovative ways of. Um, interacting with your customers. And of course, if you look at banks, like banks compete in an overcrowded and you know, intensely competitive and very volatile market. They run on very thin margins. So in order to uh, be in front of your competition, you need to innovate. Um, you know, you need to transform your business philosophy, your organization culture, the ecosystem. And the platform and tools comes at the end, like it is the last thing that you need to worry about. Um, see a walking chameleon. Um, so chameleon are very famous for the, their ability to quickly change their skin color to the surrounding environment. It can first understand the visual organization of the surrounding uh, and quickly change its color uh, variation, uh, color pigmentation accordingly. Banks should be able to adapt to their uh, business environment as rapid as chameleons. Um, so, so that that can only achieved by your uh, uh, organization transformation, making your organization an agile um, ecosystem and innovating products and uh, you know coming up new experiences uh, with uh, interacting with your customers. Um, so if you look at how you can do uh, this, like yeah, how you can adapt and differentiate, you need to reimagine the experience, uh, the customer experiences that you provide. 
and of course, innovate products for niche domains, uh, niche markets. Uh, and, and you need to think about uh, what really the customers want and you should be able to kind of aggregate and build new value added products. Uh, the value addition can come from your internal capabilities, but it's much faster if you can build a, a rich ecosystem around uh, what you have. Um, this ecosystem can be built uh, and, and you can interact with this ecosystem through through APIs and you can build capabilities of products uh, using the capabilities brought by these partners. Uh, and of course, you can you should be able to um, you know aggregate these capabilities cross domain. Um, not only banking, like you can you know um, move on to uh, you know uh, things like you know logistics, um, travel and, and um, you know come up with uh, packages which include multiple um, you know uh, value added products uh, within your uh, banking product catalog. And and the other thing is like if you look at um, the data that banks gather, you guys gather a lot of transactional data, and you can identify patterns on those the transactional data and you know expose those. Uh, analytical information or, or the patterns that you have recognized uh, as, as APIs, as uh, capabilities, and as well as you can use that um, in, in kind of streamlining or improving your existing product. Uh, so by doing those, uh, you can become an agile organization and compete effectively with your competition. So in order to um, achieve this in order to achieve uh, agility you should be able to um, you know compose uh, your service capabilities and these capabilities might come from your internal organization or it might come from your partners the partner ecosystem and you should be able to compose these capabilities uh, into you know packaged business capabilities and you should be able to quickly do that that's where the agility is important. So it's like you're composing a, a picture using these uh, small um, you know, uh, parts, uh, aggregating them. Uh, so the composability and agility brings you, um, that brings you uh, the ability of creating new products and, and, and creating new revenue channels. Um, if you look at, the API space value addition. So um, you can add value by adding attributes into your APIs, adding additional APIs. And you might have APIs driven by open banking specifications like you know, open, open Banking UK, uh, the Open Banking Berlin specification, uh, the piece to, to APIs. So you can add additional attributes on top of these APIs. Uh, you can add additional resources on top of these APIs, and you can add monetizations on, on the additional APIs or additional capabilities that you have provided on existing APIs. So when you have monetization models, and if you have different options, like you know, uh, different free as you go models, it's easy to um, the others to use or consumer to use. And of course, you can extend your capabilities supporting other types of um, integrations, like you know, eventing models, uh, different protocol support, like you know, GraphQL and things like that. So it it brings uh, you know it increases the uh, partner ecosystem. The partners can come from the fintech industry, your own partners, you know, uh, subsidiaries or you know, developers. So this way, you can add value to your APIs that you already have and the other space that we can work for is the data space you can add value addition on the data space um, as an example i will take a simple uh, banking transaction record so usually a transaction has an id and there, there would be a type like identifying what kind of transaction it is a direct debit or a transfer or a payment and there will be a description, there, there will be a biller's code, um, merchant's code, and as well as time, like, you know, time would have different 
uh, timestamps like you know value date, posting date, and execution dates and things like that. So when you remove the personally identifiable data from these transactions and de-identify them and and have uh, take a historical transaction records, um, you can identify patterns like you know consumer behavior. The, the how they invest, how what are the uh, purchases that make. You can look at the choices that these guys are making, what are the relationships that they have. And so by looking at those patterns, you can improve your existing real, um, you know, lending uh, products um, using uh, and make them smart lending products. And then you can do real time credit scoring. Um, and of course, uh, do wealth management. So you can use this um, you know, uh, data assets uh, in improving uh, your existing product and as well as you can expose them as uh, APIs. Um, you know, good example is the Pay Stats API from Bank of Bilbao uh, in Spain. So they basically gather um, transaction data coming from the cards and uh, post terminals and creates a kind of a, um, you know, a, a pattern map, which includes habits, you know, demographics, origins, um, and, and spending uh, patterns. And this information is exposed as APIs, which, um, you know, fintechs and other um, consumers can use. So this is a good uh, real world example of data space value addition and, and exposure that capability as a as an API. Um, if you look at the, 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 the ability to build an ecosystem using APIs is very important for banks. So if you look at this, uh, the banking capabilities and value is limited uh, within this circle. And with open banking compliance APIs, you can increase your reach and you can build an ecosystem around you, which basically contribute uh, additional capabilities into you, into your uh, existing capability. You might have a service portfolio like this today, but you will increase that using the digital ecosystem that you build um, uh, and you widen your capabilities like this. And what happens is you can build um, you know, different capabilities using these services like, you know, personal finance management capabilities, real-time analytics, smart lending products, you know, investment product, investment management products, payment, payment, uh, different ways of uh, paying um, and mobile banking capabilities. And you can extend uh, these products uh, into uh, using, you know, your ecosystem into uh, innovative product like you know payday lending, debit consolidations, personal loans, uh, secure lending, p 2 p lending, and uh, cash and go products. So you don't need to kind of increase your internal capability, but you can have a virtual uh, expansion using your digital ecosystem, and this happens through uh, you know APIs. And if you look at this. Um, Imopay uh, uh, graph. Uh, these developer portals uh, or API marketplaces uh, can be an accelerator in adopt adoption of your APIs. Uh, it increases the ability to build a richer ecosystem around you. So as you can see, um, uh, this axis, uh, the y-axis shows the, um, the richness of the API scope and um, x-axis shows you the experience, the richness of the experience. And you can see, um, you know, Bank of Bilboa and Deutsche Bank uh, is being recognized as masters in, um, you know, um, the stable portal uh, openness and richness. Uh, so when you have, um, you know, rich API marketplace, it's, it, in, it increases your capabilities uh, through your, um, you know, ecosystem. And I want to uh, recognize Bank, uh, 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 International Neo Bank. Um, so here, um, this shows the um, API marketplace of Deutsche Bank API program. 
So it provides a lot of capabilities and it's very interactive. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, developers would uh, feel it's easy to interact with APIs of uh, Deutsche Bank and the adop adoption is higher. And this is a bank, the uh, Dash International New York Bank. So uh, they have rich set of APIs and, and product uh, aggregation capabilities. Uh, it's a good example of how you can build an ecosystem around you. And uh, ABN MRO, it's again um, has APIs and it appears as API products. So um, API products have been a new revenue channel for ABN MRO. Um, so likewise, you can build, um, you know, a new revenue channels as API products by, you know, combining your internal capabilities or, um, you know, getting additional capabilities or services from your ecosystem or the partners. Um, another interesting uh, capability provided by Bank of Bilboa, we are it provides a way of embedding uh, banking capabilities within uh, your organization, especially around uh, you know, small and medium enterprises. So you'll have uh, agents uh, sitting in your side, interacting with, with the bank, providing uh, transaction capabilities, uh, different banking capabilities. Uh, this is one, one of the um, ways of you know, uh, providing banks capabilities and exposing them to um, you know businesses. So if you look at um, uh, the open banking model uh, in the in the Europe and the in the UK, so we we find there are uh, multiple stages of open banking and where the banks are. Uh, we have uh, we have found that some of the banks are in the stage one where they have you know, different platform challenges, system integration challenges, and data quality challenges. Uh, so they are worried about compliance only. They're not really thinking outside of com compliance. They just want to, you know, get the compliance done. But there are banks that move on to stage two where they want to add more value on top of mandatory compliance by having, uh, providing a, a rich API marketplace, um, you know, easy partner onboarding and, and uh, high quality data on the APIs and things like that. And then uh, the banks move on to the stage two where it provides more value addition on top of uh, mandatory compliance as additional behavior on the APIs, additional API resources, additional APIs and, and fle flexible usage model. Um, so we want to propel banks into stage four, where they provide, um, you know, uh, additional uh, products on top of these APIs, a uh, new way of uh, uh, engaging with their consumers, uh, identifying different uh, additional uh, revenue channels. And that's where the, um, you know, uh, the concept of banking experience canvas comes. So I want to bring this uh, interesting concept. Uh, the disruptors don't set out to beat you at your own game. They basically change the rules. So we want to change the rules. We, won't, we don't want to go on the same path that banks have been um, in kind of working, um, you know, traditionally. So we want to change the rules and that's where the, uh, the concept of banking experience canvas come. In order to explain what banking experience is, I want to um, go into a set of fundamentals which this concept is based on. So here you don't find the concept of accounts. You, you don't find like, you know, saving accounts, um, checking accounts, term deposits and things like that. So what you have is a value store. So where, where you store values. And value can from can come from different channels. Like it might be your salary, it might come from as international payments. Uh, so this value store has an identifier where the payments would identify uh, where where these uh, payments are going. So it can be an international banking account number, or it can be a QR code. It can be a um, a, a username it can come from in a different ways. So it can support multiple identities. 
and it can be partitioned. The value store can be partitioned into multiple jars, pots, or buckets. It's a separation based on your need or the consumer's need. And that separation can be a static definition, like you, you define, okay, from this value store, I want $200 or 200 pounds um, separated for my day-to-day -day spending. Uh, or it can be dynamic, like uh, if this payment come from this uh, payee, uh, sorry, payer, um, I will get 80% of that value into this uh, activity. So it can be dynamic based on different values. And then what you do is you, once you separate these jars or bucket, you attach a experience. It can be your everyday, you know, day-to-day -day, um, expenses, or it can be an investment. The investment can be on education or investment can be something like on a property. Uh, likewise, um, you can define an experience. Um, and then when you're defining an experience, you define how it has to happen, like whether it should uh, notify you, whether uh, how you describe that experience and things like that. And it becomes a unique experience. So those are the building blocks behind this uh, concept. And uh, this is, is kind of a realization of banking experience canvas. It's basically a canvas. Uh, which has, you know, uh, let's say a set of service pellets uh, where you can drag and drop these capabilities into the canvas and you can build your experience. So this is the value store and this is the international bank account number. And you can, as I said earlier, you can have a username, where you can have a QR code and likewise you can have different identities. And what you do is you build a, and build an experience. So this, here what I'm doing is I'm moving uh, $417 into my savings each month. So likewise, you can build these experiences using these components by dragging and dropping. And you can start from templates or you can start from scratch or you can use a, a something like a bot to um, build this um, you know, experience uh, automatically. Um, so this is a kind of, uh, 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 you know, build of the uh, banking experience canvas, realization of banking experience canvas. This provide a um, unique experience to the consumer, especially for the business consumer. So they can build their own banking experience using components. Um, and, and, and it is not limited to set of banking products as such. So if you look at how this works with businesses, uh, business would define this canvas, what are the capabilities they, that they want to aggregate and expose. And of course, the value store can be separated into you know, different buckets like sales and investments and can support multi-currencies and automatic uh, you know, um, trans, uh, transformation from one currency to the other currency. And you can expose these different services that banks have, like you know, payment services, uh, forex trading services, hedging, card management, and things like that. And uh, what the businesses would do is like export, like consume these uh, services uh, through APIs, through files, and things like that. And uh, as well as bank provide intelligent services to the bank. Uh, same models as retail banking, but with more richer capabilities uh, within the canvas and more um, personalization capabilities. So let's look at how we can implement this uh, this this concept, like uh, a richer user experience. Of course, the canvas has to be built as an om omni-channel experience across mobile applications and web, web portals. And they, they, they should be an event bus because this is very interactive canvas. And there should be a kind of service mesh which has uh, the capability to scale and, and have you know, discrete capabilities bundle. And of course, you need to have, the bank need to have a, a strong API marketplace where uh, we can attract FinTechs, partners, and other service providers. And back shouldn't have the capability of, of uh, you know, aggregating these APIs and providing, you know, API pro pro uh, products. And uh, need to 
have preventing capabilities, the workflows, the um, you know, the experiences are built as workflows. And of course, you need to have real-time capabilities, strong identity capabilities, like you know, identity federation, adaptive authentications, multi-factor authentication, and things like that. And you need to have machine learning capabilities and you know, um, you know, warehousing capability, data warehousing and uh, data lake capability. As WS2, we provide all of these capabilities that you need to implement this kind of uh, augmented um, uh, user experience. And as well as we provide, um, you know, innovation in banking uh, within open banking and financial services uh, business unit. Uh, we, we, uh, we have advised a lot of banks uh, in their digital strategies. We have come up with new innovative products for them. So we both provide the technical capabilities and platforms and as well as um, you know, consultation services on this. Um, you know, looking at what we provide as WS2, we, uh, we believe the journey to become a bank for is a navigation and it has waypoints. So we will start looking at the requirement first and we will come up with a design workshop. And we help you guys in internal culture shift and as well as uh, regular alignment when it comes to open banking compliance and we align partners as well we work with partners and align them with your you know um, you know cultural shifts and uh, platform transformations and then we go on implementation do the testing and we go live for open banking and um, you know uh, innovation and as well as we provide reciprocal collaboration between uh, the customers of WSO2 so we will introduce you other banks uh, to you and they, they can become uh, testers of your implementations and you can become uh, uh, theirs. So like this, we build a reciprocal collaboration and community uh, among our customers. And then we um, work with the bank closest to move uh, beyond uh, open banking compliances and become um, a, a bank for a, a, a real, uh, innovative bank, uh, so it will make sure that whatever the investment that do that you guys do on open banking compliance or regulatory compliance are well spent. Uh, using the same platform, we will push or propel you into a more um, you know innovative bank. Yes, so these are the uh, capabilities that we provide as WSO2, uh, open banking and financial services uh, arm. And as, well, and as well as the platforms and products that we provide. Uh, so if you have any questions, if you want to uh, get more details about what we have done across the globe, especially around the Europe, uh, please um, you know, send me an email or you know, check, um, uh, check with me. And, and I have written a lot of uh, content around you know, regulatory compliance, uh, the innovative um, product capabilities around banking and things like that. You can check my uh, blog as well.